Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, today's case is a Marfan patient, nine-year-old, presenting with severe subluxation of the IOL. Uh, as you can see, the zonules are characteristically still present, but stretched with severe subluxation. So the plan here was a lensectomy, and then managing the aphakia using the famous Yamani technique. So the way I did my lensectomy is not through the pars plana approach. I did it through an anterior or a corneal approach. As you can see, I pierced the anterior capsule of the subluxated crystalline lens using an MVR blade, creating two openings in the anterior capsule through which I will put my irrigation and use the vitreous cutter to cut and aspirate the subluxated crystalline lens. I tried my, as much as possible to preserve the anterior hyaloid face and not to disturb it. Sometimes it is impossible. As you can see, I have the infusion cannula placed in the pars plana in anticipation if I have vitreous loss and the eye becomes hypotenus, I can always uh, switch it on in order to reform the globe. So now that the, all the lens matter is removed, I will remove the posterior capsule and the zonules in order to create space for me to implant my multi-piece or three-piece IOL using the Amani technique. If you do not remove the capsule or if you do not remove the zonules, especially the capsule, you might find some resistance um, in properly placing your multi-piece IOL in its proper position. Now that the subluxated lens is removed, I mark my, uh, my marks in order to delineate exactly how and where I'm going to place my 28 gauge needles. You have to place the needles or the point of entry of the needles into the eye exactly 180 degrees apart in order to avoid any lens tilting. You have to clearly mark your marks in order to have everything in the proper position. The lens we use is the Johnson & Johnson multi-piece IOL. It's not really the ideal IOL for the Amani technique as the haptics are rigid, unlike the lenses um, which was uh, described classically from Dr. Yamani, which usually have more malleable and more forgiving haptics. The problem with the um, Alcon and the Johnson & Johnson multi-piece IOLs or three-piece IOLs is that because the haptics are very rigid, any excessive maneuvering or moving or grasping or bending of the haptics can lead uh, to the haptics, lead the haptics to break. So one of the very important points in a Yamani technique is really not to bring the haptic of the IOL to the needle, but actually to bring the needle to the haptic in order to avoid excessive manipulation. A second uh, pearl or very important trick is that you have to be ready with your grasping forceps, your McPherson forceps or your tying forceps to immediately grab the exteriorized haptic and then you need to apply heat to the tip of the haptic creating a small flange which should fit through your sclerotomy or your track as to avoid the flange or the part of the haptic uh, um, not to be exposed under the retina sorry after the under the conjunctiva as this can lead to conjunctival erosion and can cause infections as well. 
Second haptic is usually more difficult just because of accessibility. So a trick is to push the IOL with your needle away in order to properly visualize the haptic, grab it, dock it into your needle once again, very slowly and gently remove the needle through the or from the scleral track and again be ready with your tying forceps or your grasping forceps in order to immediately grab the haptic as it becomes exteriorized. Again grab it and then cauterize it and also it's, it's important to mention when you cauterize uh, these haptics you shouldn't really touch them as not to burn them or or destroy them or break them. You need to apply heat uh, very close to the haptic to create the flange. So there's a lot of videos online demonstrating the Amani technique, making it look like a very easy, simple, straightforward procedure. It really is not. It needs uh, um, some practice and it needs some coordination. And as you just saw, when I managed to exteriorize the second haptic, what happened is my first haptic became dislodged from the uh, scleral tract and the eye well was severely uh, decentered. So I had to break the flange using a Westcott scissor or a Vanus scissor uh, in order for me to reintroduce the uh, haptic into the needle once again. If you do this multiple times, you start losing some of the length of the, of the haptic, and then you can end up by failing to properly uh, put the eye in place, which should be nice and centered. So I redock the haptic into the needle once again, and I repeat what I did the first two times. And really, especially at the beginning, uh, experiencing these problems is, is quite common. Don't 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 freak out. Don't don't feel bad. There's always a second chance if you do things right. And if you follow the few simple rules and tips and tricks that I just mentioned, eventually the Yamani technique will be a uh, a go-to technique, which is very useful in management of patients with aphakia with no capsular support. Once done, I just washed, washed the anterior chamber, did hydration to my wounds, and that was it. Thank you very much for your time. I really hope this video was useful to everyone.